Hi, I'm David Poutney uh, and I'm an opera director, uh, but I've also had various um, management roles in my time, um, being intendant of the Breakance Festival, artistic director of WNO uh, at ENO in the 80s. Um, so, yeah, opera is what I do. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, and you were able to tell us a bit more then um, about this prize and um, why you've been put forward for it and, and all of the detail behind that. Well, uh, of course, I don't really know why I've been put forward to it. Uh, and it's a very it's a great honour and I'm very, very grateful for it. Um, as I said, I, I have had various sort of senior artistic leadership roles in my career. Um, starting off at Scottish Opera in Glasgow and then um, <clears throat> being part of the triumvirate who led ENO in London during the uh, during the 80s, um, being intendant of the Bregenz Festival um, for more or less the first decade of th this century, uh, and then being artistic director at WNO. So, um, I have exercised a lot of artistic leadership, um, whether well or badly, it's not for me to say, but um, I've certainly always been very keen in, in all these different posts uh, to push the boundaries of what opera companies or festivals can do and can show and to try to always broaden what is available to the audience obviously to include the things that they know and they love because that's important, but also continually to remind audiences of how much there is that they don't know and don't yet know that they love. Um, because I think that's, that's part of our role as artistic leaders is to open people's minds to experiences and aspects of, of operatic literature that were perhaps not familiar to them. Absolutely. Thank you. That was a great answer. Um, and I, I was just wondering, this is kind of moving into the realms of, of the kind of stuff we do a little bit. Um, do you have any thoughts on what some of the key governance issues are in within the arts sector at the moment? Well, <clears throat> I think it's always it's always very difficult to find the right balance between being effective and business-like organizations. And it's, there is a huge onus on us as artistic organizations to be business-like and to be efficient. Uh, we are spending a lot of public money. We need to spend that money wisely and intelligently. But ultimately our raison d'etre is not to be a business. So this is an interesting paradox. Um, what, what drives us is not ultimately to say, yes, we, we made money or um, we, we made a huge return on our invested money, but to express artistic matters and to evaluate ourselves by the quality and the innovation of our artistic ideas. And those are not always compatible with business aims. Uh, and I suppose I could put that most starkly by saying that probably the most efficient, financially efficient thing an opera company can do is to do nothing. Because everything that an opera company does is very expensive. It's very labor intensive. It involves a lot of people. Um, it's a complex art form uh, that often requires quite substantial investment in hardware as well as the labor costs. Um, and so squaring all that with being efficient and business-like is not a simple option. Uh, it's, it's, it's a complex issue and one that requires actually constant endeavor, both on the part of management and, and on the part of boards, um, which are very often peopled by, by trustees whose primary preoccupation is not perhaps necessarily artistic expression, but that they have other agendas. And bringing these different agendas together is, is I think, one of the key aspects of artistic leadership. 
Ah, thank you very much. Um, now, we, at the Good Governance Institute, we run um, a festival of governance every year. This year uh, is in September. Um, and, and like I explained earlier, it's, it's about bringing together um, people who are interested in governance, want to think about it differently, and want to engage with people who are really keen to kind of learn about and discuss ethical governance and, and, and what that means um, in the UK and beyond. Um, this year's thing, um, theme is all about thinking differently. Um, and, and the way that we're describing it is about flipping the script. And I was wondering if you've got an example or a way that you think that you or indeed the sector you work in could flip the script and think about something differently maybe culturally or from a mindset basis that might transform how you work well obviously uh, one of the things that the the pandemic has thrown up has been to <clears throat> reveal the the resources that are presented by new technologies and this again is, is to me a very ambivalent issue. Um, I believe that one of the really essential qualities of opera and, and the artistic expression that opera affords is as a live art form. Um, but we have of course been denied access to that live art form for the past year. And I think it's just as I think uh, on a broad political level if you like um that we've thrown away the keys of liberty in many aspects in order to combat the virus and it's extremely important that we remember to get those keys back <laughs> once lost they're never very easy to re-establish uh, and similarly i think it's very important that we don't allow the digital aspect which has been essential to our survival actually over the pandemic, to slide into number one position. It, it's a very important position and it's a position that offers access to all kinds of people who perhaps have not ventured into traditional theatres. But ultimately, um, opera is not a canned product. It's a live product. And just as we should always want to eat fresh food, but rely on tins in times of crisis. Um, artistically, we shouldn't rely on tins in the future. <laughs>